Hello, second grade. This is Mr. Holman. It's good to know that you're out there, that you're studying, that you're um, working on uh, the package we sent home. Today, I'm going to read a book from our Faunus and Pinnell unit, and it's our next unit is about short biographies. Biography is a big word, and it's an important word, though. The biography means, sorry, I got to get this centered, life story. So we're going to be talking about people's life story. We're going to be what they were like, what they liked to do, what made them who they are. And today we're going to be talking about Zora Hurston and the China Berry Tree. This is, this is by William Miller. It's illustrated by Cornelius Van Wright and Ying Hua Hu. And all of you remember that the illustrators draw the pictures and that the, uh, the author writes the words. Zora Hurston and the China Berry Tree. Zora Hurston loved the China Berry Tree. Her mother taught her to climb it, one branch at a time. From the tree, she could see as far as the lake, as far as the horizon. Zora dreamed of fishing in the lake, catching bream and catfish in the moonlight. Zora dreamed of seeing the cities beyond the horizon, of living there one day. And her dreams want to take her well beyond that horizon. But only boys fished in the lake, and only men traveled to the cities. Zora watched with envy as the wagons rattled down the dusty roads. Envy is a word that means she was a little bit jealous. Her father told her to wear a dress, to leave tree climbing to wild boys who had no better way to spend their time. He told her to read the Bible every day, to learn the verses she could cite in Sunday school. He warned her about girls who didn't obey their fathers, girls who didn't grow up to be young ladies. But Zora only listened to her mother. She taught Zora that everything had a voice, the trees the rushing wind, and the stars in the midnight sky. She taught Zora that the world belonged to her, even the lake and far-off horizon. So Zora went everywhere. She walked into the town store and watched while the men played checkers. She asked questions and more questions until the men taught her how to play. Sorry. She followed the boys to the edge of the campfires and listened while their fathers rang out, sang out about John Henry, a man so strong he swung a nine-pound hammer from dawn till dusk. She learned, she learned about Death, the great square-toed one who lived in the West. Death sat on a platform made of palm leaves and ruled with a sword in his hands. Zora learned about Africa, the place where she and her people came from. In Africa, they had been kings and queens, builders of cities that stood for thousands of years. They worshipped gods who ruled the sky, the mountains, the rivers, the stormy sea. One morning, Zora's mother didn't feel well. She told Zora not to worry, that soon she would be well again. She told Zora to go outside and play and climb her favorite tree. 
but Zora couldn't play. She saw how tired her mother was. She saw the pain in her eyes. Day after day, Zora sat beside her mother's bed, telling her stories she had heard beside the campfires. Her mother smiled and asked Zora to always remember what she had learned. Stories, she said, kept their people alive. As long as they were told, Africa would live in their hearts. Zora promised to remember. Zora's mother slowly got worse. Men and women came to sit up with her through the long, hot nights. The town doctor came. He gave her pills and shook his head and walked sadly away. Even the root doctor tried his magic. He rubbed snake oil and mustard salve on her face, burned tall white, a tall white candle beside her bed, but nothing worked. Zora was sitting in the parlor when her father told her that she would not see her mother again. Zora felt as if she had died. She watched while the old people stopped the clocks and put the sheets on the mirror. She watched while the women cried and the men stared at their Sunday shoes. But then she could sit still no more. Zora ran from the house, ran all the way to the china berry tree. She climbed to the first branch and then the next and climbed almost to the top. A sparrow sang out in, her, in a voice like her mother's. The sparrow, told, the sparrow told her not to give up, to climb even higher. From the top of the tree, Zora saw again the world her mother had given her. The lake filled with fish. The cities where she would tell people all she had learned beside the campfires. Zora promised her mother that she would never stop climbing would always reach for the newborn sky, would always jump at the morning sun. Zora Hurston was born in 1891. She grew up in Eatonville, Florida, the first all-black incorporated town in America. At an early age, she was exposed to the rich oral tradition of her community, stories, songs, and folk tales that celebrated African-American life. Zora attended Howard University and Barnard College, where she studied anthropology. She traveled throughout the South, recording the folk tales of her people. She published these stories in a collection called Mules and Men, Zora was also the author of many works of fiction. Her most famous novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God, is a classic of African-American literature. Okay. Zora Hurston collected the stories of her people. She was inspired by her mother to keep climbing, to keep doing bigger and better things. I want you to take your notebook and put down today's date, which is April 1st. And I want you to answer a couple of questions. In what way are crow legends and stories similar to the African legends and stories that Zorro was, was listening? You know, is your... I, you have a proud oral tradition, and what do you like best about it? Also, what would you do to keep those stories alive into the future? How are you going to continue to tell them, speak them? Would you write them down? What do you think is the best way to keep your traditions alive? I'll be looking forward to looking at your answers as soon as we get back to the classroom. 
But until then, have a very good day, and I will see you tomorrow with another book. And we'll do another biography. Thank you very much. Stay healthy, stay safe, class.